Thanks for watching, everyone. For our latest Artemis Live video interview, I'm delighted to welcome Matt Britton from PwC. Matt is a partner in the PwC Bermuda Insurance and Reinsurance Practice, and he's also the Risk Assurance Practice Leader there as well. And so Matt's got a deep insight into the Bermuda marketplace, which obviously we care about at Artemis, and he works closely with clients from across insurance, reinsurance, and insurance linked securities there. In particular, Matt's got a focus on audit and risk control oversight of companies. So it'll be interesting to hear how he thinks the Bermuda market is responding to the global pressures that we've had of late. Welcome, Matt. Really good to see you. Well, well Steve, thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be talking with you today. Great. So to start, I thought it'd be good to hear your view on how you feel the Bermuda market has weathered the particularly volatile global environment in recent years. Um, perhaps that's where we could begin. Yeah, no, great. Yeah, I mean, you know, when when you think about just how challenging the environment has been for the Bermuda market, the multiple years of cat losses exceeding 100 billion, far reaching impacts of the global pandemic, and, and more recently, rampant inflation and the rapid rise in interest rates, I think, I think you have to say that the Bermuda market has weathered extremely well. It's It's shown fantastic resilience, it continues to innovate and it remains a market that attracts new capital and uh, new entrants. I guess I, I do have to temper or balance that view and recognize that as a result of the challenging environment, you know, that many reinsurers have failed to uh, generate returns that meet their cost of capital for the last five years or so. So I guess, uh, I guess what I'm saying, Steve, is your choice of words weathered is probably a good one. <laughs> it's probably a, a good reflection of how a number of the reinsurers actually feel. You make a very good point there about cost of capital. And obviously, we're, we've moved into a, a harder marketplace. Um, do, do you think or do you hope that that's going to help the industry to, to better demonstrate its ability to meet that, that hurdle? Well, yeah, I definitely feel that um, one one of this year was a was a was a turning point um, that should start to to allow reinsurers to have a platform from which that they can start generating those returns. It'll help them meet their cost of capital. Mm. So, how big an issue do you think um, the global macro environment and the financial market volatility has been this year for Bermuda's marketplace? Oh my God! I think uh, I, I, th I think uh, I think you'd have to say that it's been acute and very wide-reaching. And I think, I think again, you can you can take a lot away from the outcome of this one-one renewal season. Actually, when you think about it, if you were to ask the question, why after a number of successive years of sort of plus one hundred billion dollar cat losses, why was it that it was this particular one one where we saw such a dramatic shift? I think uh, I think a large part of that answer would have to be that this renewal season came off the back of the significant interest rate rises and, and rampant inflation rate. Um, obviously, the the impact of the interest rate rises has been a significant decline in the market's overall capital position as reinsurers have suffered unrealized losses in their investment portfolios. I should I, I should probably point out that as we evaluate that decline, we, we should be aware that those losses are, are not considered credit related and we're not getting the benefit on the other side of the balance sheet where reserves are not discounted. But regardless of those factors, I think it, it, you know, we've got to recognize that puts us at the very lower end of the capital position that the Bermuda marketplace has been in for the last sort of like decade. Um, another thing then outside of interest rates has been inflation, where I think that you know we're still probably maybe early in understanding and seeing the actual potential impact of inflation. Um, both from the perspective of reserve adequacy and how it's getting factored into to pricing on a on a on a go forward basis, so those are the, the two sort of like macro level impacts that sort of we're thinking about. The, the flip side to this, though, is always like the flip side. What is the other side of the coin? I think you would say, as we all would, that in, in insurance, you know, at its core, its purpose is there to help people and companies mitigate risk, manage uncertainty, etc. So while we are in a period of great uncertainty, I think it also presents a lot of opportunities to insurers and reinsurers to help them help their clients manage through this uncertain period of time.
Mm, that's a that's a really great point as well. It's um, so much volatility in the world in all sorts of angles, and, and obviously that does bring opportunity to those who can help in managing risk. Um, I guess the other big volatility drivers are the, the catastrophe losses that you've mentioned, um, but also climate risk as well. And uh, and now we're in a hard market environment, and some reinsurers are growing their books of NatCat risk, while some others, some fairly well known, are shying away from it and even pulling back from that segment. So what's your perspective of how the Bermuda market is navigating these trends? And I guess particularly as Bermuda has been such a hub for catastrophe risk over the years. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying your, your choice of the words weathered and navigating. Um, very, 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 uh, very climate related. Um, so I hear your, your choice of words is great. I think over the past five years or so, the market has been very carefully navigating these waters. What I think we saw at 1-1, one, one, though, was a signal that the reinsurers are, are, are done with simply navigating and that they're setting their sights and ambition on, on forging a profitable path forward. I, I would say that you're right. There are much more varying appetites for NatCat in the Bermuda marketplace than there once were. Um, I think it's important to take a little, little bit of history when we think about that. that it's, it's partly as a result of the fact that there were lots of acquisitions over the past 10 years of Bermuda insurers into larger groups that have had less appetite for the volatility that NatCat brings. But it's, it's also due to uh, the fact that over that same period of time, many of the Bermuda reinsurers have diversified their books of business away from NatCat. And that diversification has not only reduced their reliance on NatCat, but it's also given them a platform that provides greater agility and, and options for them. Um, but but to, to get to your point, there has been that varying appetite. You know, while there are those varying appetites that are out there, at 1-1, one, one, we should point out that we did see across the market, we saw dramatic increase in pricing. We also saw um, uh, insure, reinsurers pushing up their attachment points and therefore moving away from the working layers while also narrowing their coverages. So yeah, varying appetite, but, a, but certain trends at 1-1 one, one that were all effectively moving in the same direction. Well, what did 1-1 one, one show us th there? Well, ultimately, we saw reinsurers pushing some of the volatility back into insurer's balance sheet. So the next thing I think that I'm interested in seeing is, like, while we, we kind of feel that the reinsurers are remaining cautious at this point in time, if the market continues to harden, um, will some of that appetite return? Or will some form of new capital come into the marketplace to um, step in and provide some of that earnings volatility that maybe the market has somewhat moved away from as a result of mm. one Yeah, that's a, that's a great point as well, because um, we are beginning to see some sort of plateauing in pricing in the cap bond market, which obviously prices beyond one one. Um, and, and I do think that we're also beginning to see a little bit of evidence of people perhaps getting more appetite for that earnings volatility you speak about. Um, do, do you think um, the ILS market potentially has an opportunity to make itself more important to reinsurers at this point in time? I, I think the I think the I think the ILS market is extremely important uh, to, to mm -hmm. reinsurers. I think again over this past kind of like decade, sort of. Um, the amount of capital that the RLS market has has provided to reinsurers has been extremely important. I think that, yeah, to your point, we have seen uh, less investor appetite over the past sort of 12 months. Um, and again, I think we're, we're, we're looking to see will any of that capital, or how much of that capital will, will return. Um, we do have the idea that there's a lot of P so sense, sorry, that there's a lot of P capital waiting on the sidelines ready to be deployed. Mm -hmm. And presumably that's going to come with having a look at sort of how does the how does the market continue to progress? Does it remain hard? Is there some softening in it, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I think I think everybody's looking for the evidence at um, the mid year this year, aren't they? It's uh, yeah, very I think important. Mid year renewal. renewals are going to be very interesting. Yeah. So great. Um, thank you, Matt. And finally, I was wondering if you could give us sort of your, what are, what are your top issues that insurance, reinsurance or ILS players in Bermuda really need to keep on top of through the rest of 2023 and perhaps beyond that as well? Okay. Um, it's a great question. Um, 
sort of a, potentially a lot to 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 talk in there because there's lots of issues that are that are out there. I mean, we PwC recently did our global CEO survey, and the the, the top three issues concerning CEOs of insurers were inflation, the macroeconomic volatility that you've spoken about, and also cyber risk. And I think that you know, if you look at those three, you'd say, hey, listen, they make a lot of sense. They're not necessarily unsurprising. I personally think though the, the the sort of the more unique aspect of today's environment is the absolute amount of uncertainty that's out there and the, the confluences of challenges and also how interconnected they are. You know, you, you start a conversation today about geopolitical uncertainty. And if you let that conversation run for a little bit, eventually you're going to get to how that in turn leads to increased cyber risk. So there's an enormous amount of connectedness to, to all of the, the challenges and risks that the that, 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 that the environment is facing. And I think reinsurers are currently, they're recognizing that and they're saying to themselves, hey, listen, I've got to become increasingly agile. And this is this is in turn leading to a, a conversation about transformation or a broader conversation about transformation. How do we transform from a capital perspective, a tech perspective, people distribution, et cetera, et cetera. So I think a lot of these things are going to cause a bigger conversation from a, from a, from a transformation perspective. As I look at the reinsurance market specifically, I think there's also a, a need to focus on relevance. As you as you pointed out, a number of reinsurance reinsurers have shied away from pop, from PropCat and um, various secondary perils. And if you think about reinsurance as one of many forms of potential capital solutions, um, insurers are definitely going to be thinking about their options. Um, and there's, an, there's therefore a, a, a need for reinsurers to get to grips with the, this environment where we expect that we're going to continue to see multiple catastrophe events happening in multiple reason, regions, which means the reinsurers are going to have to get an increased level of confidence in how their models and their pricing is going to adapt to this new environment of multiple CAD events happening in multiple regions. Mm. So yeah, interconnectedness and how are we going to adapt our models and our pricing to the environment we're in? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point and a great word to, to finish off on interconnected because it does feel like the whole world is so in, interconnected these days, it, definitely when it comes to risk as well. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Matt. Um, really appreciate you spending some time with me today and great to get your insights into the Bermuda market as it sets itself up for what could be a very profitable year given the hard market environment. So um, maybe we should catch up again in a year's time and see how they've all done. Absolutely. I would be a, be a pleasure, Steve. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Matt. Great to speak with you today.